Good morning and welcome to Channel 3. This morning's first session is the PAMA meeting. You can find this meeting by going back to the virtual lobby and selecting the Zoom link there. Enjoy. We can call the meeting to order, I guess, at 9.06 on 3.8 of 2021. Um, we can start off with uh, Roll call of current uh, officers. Technically, we got, well, I'm kind of dual, dual with that right here. Mike Gunya is our president, but I don't see him. Here at this point, um, I'm VP. Eric Peterson is our uh, secretary. Um, treasurer is not able to be here. He did forward me his information, so we should be good there. Um, so I can present that as we need. Francis Wagner, and uh, I guess that's about it there. And then I got the previous last meeting's minutes. I can run through, that was March 3rd of 2022, last year, our last current meeting that we had. That was called the order at 2.30 by Nick Gainert. We had a roll call, um, read the meeting minutes from March 1st, read by and handed out by Clark Gebhardt, Jeff Kryan, a uh, motion to approve Rod Breck in second. Um, treasury report was handed out by Nick Gainert, Mike Gunya approved, card seconded, and all in favor. Um, Went over old business of uh, Andrew Tybert, uh, motion to give $1,000 as requested by Jeff Krein to the North, Northland Community Technical College and to their, uh, to their student life fund for their NTC PAMA club for 2020-2021 supplement. Brought forward from the 3-1 of 2020 meeting, Chad Symington, uh, Seconded and that passed. Jerry, uh, motion to kill the table discussion of the Williams ratcheting screwdriver purchase. And that got seconded and passed. Uh, new business was uh, we had the Eric Peterson was uh, listed as the North Dakota Mechanic of the Year from Bismarck Arrow. Discussion of bylaws, um, nothing happened there, uh, but we, we can get into that. Chad Symington motion to develop a group uh, to update bylaws and bring forward to the next meeting. You and the employed members would be part of the working group for that. And that was seconded by Andrew Tybert, passed. Jeff Krein motion to nominate Clark in charge of running the annual raffle. I accepted. Dan Kosowski seconded and that passed. Um, we discussed the number of signatures to have on the back of, on the bank account. Mark Cannon motion to leave the treasurer and president as signatures on the account. Rod Bracken seconded. Jeff um, motion and amendment to add Nick and additional treasurer to the president. Motion amendment failed by vote of hands. Chad Symington motion to add Francis Wagner to the account. Kosowski seconded. Uh, Symington motion to amend Francis Wagner to be account holder. Gainer to be a secondary signature on the account. That one was seconded by Jeff Kryan and that motion passed. So that's where we're at there. We have officers and Nick Gainer who stepped down as president. Ganya assumed president position. Clark Gebhardt assumed vice president position. Eric Peterson was nominated and accepted the secretary position. Francis Wagner was nominated and accepted the treasurer position. Rod Bracken continues as scholarship chairman position. 
and Jeff Crine motion to adjourn at 3.40. Gaynard second in that passed, and that's our minutes if uh, agreed upon by the group from our previous meeting. I'd make a motion to approve the minutes as read. Uh, is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. I'll second that. Okay, treasurer report. Did everybody get my email that had all this information in there? Would you like me to hold it up so you can see it on the camera? Is this, no, that's too dark to, to see anything. Basically, everybody that I had on a current email listing, I sent out all this information we will be going over. Uh, if you look through there, you should have access to that. If you have any questions, feel free. Or if you did not get it and you would like to get it, uh, reach out to me and I will uh, pass it along your way. Basically, the treasurer's report, just before we get fully into that, um, we did get everything swapped over just recently. Um, Nick is, as we motioned and as we decided on our last meeting, uh, Nick Gaynert is, uh, is on the account as a signature, but uh, Francis Wagner is the account holder. And uh, we got all of our paperwork submitted again to the state so that's all taken care of and from where we're at we started off the year um with nineteen thousand dollars four hundred nineteen thousand four hundred and forty nine dollars and twenty five cents uh no i'm mistaken we started off with nineteen thousand four hundred and fifty eight and 25 cents on March 3rd of 2020 from where he took over. Had no money income this year, various payments out. Um, the major payments we had were, we did purchase three guns for a gun raffle that uh, We are not having this year, but we have them for next year's gun raffle. Um, the account has a new account number. There were checks purchased, but then when it got swapped from one person to the other, they required us to change our account number and everything. So we are getting new checks through that. Um, the main things that we got for money in was there were donations given to us um, through Rod, through his efforts with the uh, his subcommittee of the uh, scholarship committee. Um, as of when I received this, when he gave me that information, he had received $17,000 from Bismarck with monies from Bismarck Air, Oda Flight, Odegaard Wings, Cindy Rochenberg, Burr, Tail Towers Aviation. And then there's another one that had been received after he submitted this to me for another thousand dollars, but I do not know who that was from. That is planned to be deposited into our account this, well, tomorrow, this Tuesday. Um, but as with the information he had as of March 3rd of 2021, we had $19,361.88 in our account. 17000 of that, which was directly given specifically for um, scholarships for this year. Is that 17,000 or 1,700? Sorry, 1,700. I misspoke. 1,700 dollars, correct. Which would be 2,700 dollars with that extra thousand dollars added in there. So, for us to use numbers to figure out what we want to give later on for our uh, 
scholarships, there's $2,700 of money that was brought in this year without any fundraising of our normal ways, but brought in through Rod for that, for us to divvy up. And he'll have more to speak on that as we go. So if there's no objections, is uh, I guess, can we uh, accept the treasurer's report through me? Motion to approve. Okay. Do we have a second? Nate Gaynor seconds. Then we can start into our subcommittee reports. Uh, I'm gonna give it to you, Rod. Uh, as far as the committee report, we've uh, made a selection for uh, three students. Uh, two of them are from Northland and one of them from is, uh, Watertown. And um, they've been notified and I have the pictures and stuff of them. Um, I don't have any certificates uh, printed. I think, uh, I don't remember who did that last year, but someone did. Um, so we won't be presenting them per se. We'll be mailing them to them, I assume. And the same thing for like the jackets. I have sizes for that as well. Okay. So there was six, six, um, that, uh, sent me applications and three of them were selected. Okay. Um, I don't know if this is appropriate time to bring it up, but uh, does the, the dollar amounts I spoke of on the treasurer's report, Mark, what you had on, uh, on your books? I, I, I did not tell them because uh, it was uh, confusing as to what we had set as an amount and what we actually awarded last year. So I, I just left it and nobody asked me. Okay. Um, this, so there's no particulars on how it would be divvied up as far as you know. Okay, on that end, if I read what we had here from our meeting minutes from March 1st, 2022, um, ND PAMA scholarship funded one scholarship fully at 1750. And then we added $500 to the $4,000 that were donated towards the scholarship to be able to hand out three scholarships of equal $1,500 each. Unless if I screwed that up in our meeting minutes, that's what I got down in there. Does that make sense to others? The other issue is, is I don't see the account statement yeah, the, exactly what we had sent out, but. The 1750, I suppose that would be the Gordy person one. I would assume so. And then the other two would be 1500. Yeah. Correct? I believe so. Man, it'd be a lot easier if they get this audio fixed. <laughs> I'm assuming it would come up in new business on us deciding what we wanted to, how much we wanted to actually specifically give out for each one of the scholarships. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, that would have to be. We, we can get into that then. Yeah. Okay, we can go into the uh, raffle committee. We purchased three guns and planning to have a raffle this year due to events, how they transpired. We did not have a raffle. Um, we have those on hand. They are currently person to person transferred under my name right now paid for through the treasurer. Um, we have a uh, Savage bolt action uh, access to XP 30 odd six. 
We have a Benelli Pump Nova 12 gauge uh, camo version. And we have a uh, Ruger semi auto 1022 takedown version, camo and food version on hand for next year's raffle. Um, I'm also planning for next year's raffle to try to get this stuff up uh, about August time frame to have tickets out to everybody so you guys can try to get that out to you or whoever you're trying to sell during your normal hunting type adventures that you have during your year next year. Um, next would be, I guess, mechanic of the year. Um, Clark, one thing on your raffle, they usually yeah. won't issue a permit prior to six months in advance of the drawing. Correct. You got to work with that. Yep. So just so you're aware of that. It sounds like it, is that a uh, designation set by each city of which you would have that in or county of which it would be in? It's pretty each much a, different. A kind of a state rule from the state's attorney's office. Uh, because I just don't want you running a raffle too long. You, you yeah. could probably get by on it for a month or two. Uh, where where's where's it going to be at next year? It's Fargo next year. Okay, so then with Fargo, you have special issues too, because Fargo is not real gun friendly in raffles. So you okay. might have to go get your permit out of West Fargo. Okay. Uh, Mike DeBreeze would be a good contact for that info. Okay. And then what you do is you you basically draw in West Fargo and then transmit the information back. Can you hear me? Hmm. It's okay. it's it's really a difficult working with Fargo and guns. Okay. We'll work with Mike DeRees as the year goes on. Yep. Uh, just this is just an idea. You could run that raffle this summer and do something else for for Fargo and that doesn't involve guns. Uh, it might be easier that way if you uh, and do like the TV set and do some other things and get the raffle going this summer and give it away just before hunting season. Uh, I was just at the gun show this weekend and. Guns are a very popular thing right now. Okay. And, uh, Five dollar tickets would go like hotcakes. We will take that under advisement. Okay. Oh, uh, mechanic of the year. Have you guys heard any grumblings, or uh, is anybody? have anyone in mind that or anyone that they need to remind to uh, possibly submit? I have not received any information of anybody wanting to uh, submit somebody as mechanic of the year candidate at this time. It's something that I guess could for be foregone if we have no applicants, but as of now we have zero. So I would keep that under advisement. If we have none today, um, we have another meeting tomorrow. We can uh, get that taken care of during that meeting if you have any ideas. Um, we had, I don't know if this is technically a subcommittee and tell me if it's not in your opinion, but uh, the bylaw update committee, I guess, in essence, um, that was kind of halfway set up during our previous meeting of UND employees going through the bylaws. There's a lot of stuff to do in there. Um, I have to be honest, I could have done a whole lot more with that. I read through it. I can't find anything. Well, truthfully, number one, uh, I believe our most current version is from updated in March 7th of 2000. If anybody has access to more current data than that, that'd be great. 
but that's what I had access to. That was the most current copy that I could find when I was investigating it last spring um, was 2000. Okay. So that's something we're going to need to, uh, there, there's a lot of stuff in there. Um, as you noticed, we went back to $15 dues because that's what the bylaws state. There's also a whole lot of information in there of when we want to make bylaw changes, whether the constitution or the bylaws, we have multiple months through uh, reporting requirements to our members before we make changes um, and other items to that that we would have to do. Um, so yeah, well, this is gonna be something that needs to be updated, I would have to say. And uh, will it, that process did not take place over this past year for multiple reasons. So if there's people that would like to uh, be added to the group to work on that, that'd be great. If not, we'll go from there. But um, I think this subcommittee will continue for next year and hopefully we'll have uh, multiple emails being sent out throughout the year to uh, do the updates that we need and uh, notify everybody as per our bylaws to changes that we're proposing as we go along. So that group would continue to be, I guess, technically a Morgan, a Dan, a Clark, a Chad, and a Nick Gaynert, I guess, at this point to work through that and get that taken care of. Unless if anybody else wants to throw their hand up to help out. Um, and I believe that's the end of our subcommittee reports. Uh, old business. Um, a little bit. Um, so we went over the bylaws a little bit. The group uh, the subcommittee that was created for that. I don't really have. Old business to bring forward other than it was spoke of to check out the status of our organization federally. Um, that's another one of those things that was talked about that never happened over the past year, technically. Um, if we're going to want to get answers on that, the little bit I've dug into it, it appears as if we can be a uh, nonprofit organization through the state registered through the state in good standing with the state of which we are since they have records of that going back to beginning of the 2000s um, that we have access to that I've seen. Um, but that is different than being a non taxable entity through the federal government. So there's all different kinds of version of 990. So uh, if if we want to get an actual answer to that, we're going to have to probably spend some money through a uh, tax attorney to make sure where on earth we need to be. There's multiple loopholes and ways that you can make sure that you don't have to be a part of that, depending on how your organization is run and the amount of money you bring in. We're underneath the $50,000 threshold for one of the loopholes to get through there, but um, I will have to ask the group if I can have access to dollars to talk to a tax attorney and if you guys have recommendation of one that you would like to work through to uh, be able to get an actual answer for that if that's a avenue that we still want to go or if we want to just continue with the way that we've been going which is uh, out of date bylaws that we don't follow and uh, unknown tax status. Do we have an idea on how much that would cost, Clark, or? Whatever an hourly rate for a tax attorney would be, I would assume. Unless if you guys have a friend that you can just ask on a weekend.
Yeah, you'd need a tax attorney and not a tax preparer because correct the preparer wouldn't uh, have the skivvy on what's legal and not. So I was able to find a one eight hundred number for uh, the IRS that a person could make a phone call to, but I think you'd want to have your ducks in a row before you start digging into that phone number. Yeah, you don't want to open that. That, that was that was from an article from two thousand ten when they started the whole nine ninety reporting process kind of thing too. So that yeah. was uh, that was a while ago. So I would make a motion that uh, we allocate $500 maximum. If it becomes more than that, we, uh, we have another meeting on this. Um, if it's more than $500 to be able to figure out a actual answer for our organization. And I will uh, chase that down through Grand Forks, try to just, I guess I'll just start making some phone calls to people to see if they're willing to work with us on this. And unless if anybody has a name that they would like to work through. I'll second your motion, Clark. Okay. And just to make sure here, Eric, can you still hear us? And are you still there able to take notes as we've gone along? Perfect. That will work there. Um, you got to call for a vote on that, clerk. Oh, sorry. Let's have a, a yay, or how do we got to do this? Vote of hands. I mean, we don't have hands. Let's have, we got to have half the people muted. Is there a thumbs up thing? I see a thumbs up from a Nicholas Gaynor. Do you guys know how to do that? On the on the way bottom, there's a thing that says reactions. If you click on reactions, then you're able to select. Uh... There you go. Vote yes is a thumbs up. How about that? It appears as if the uh, thumbs up outweigh the uh, Nothing, so let's count on that. <laughs> All right, vote passes. And that's it on that, I guess. I guess as far as I know, we can go to new business. New business number one, I'd like to get into the uh, mechanic of the year. Does anybody, does anybody know anything about that? Where we're at, where anybody talked about it? Do you have any ideas of someone you'd like to nominate? If so, you don't need to mention it right now. You can contact me after the meeting if you would like. If you need my contact information, let me know. We can give it out over this for everybody if there's an issue with not having it. I guess truthfully, I can just... Is this chat thing? I would say if you don't get any nominations, Clark, we just don't give it. I mean, what else can you do? Yeah, I agree. If if you don't have anything by the end of the day, say then it's it just we go on without awarding anybody. Okay. Yeah, typically in the past it's been the president, vice president, and an FAA rep that chose the mechanic of the year. Um, but we really haven't had to get involved the last few years because we've only had one applicant, it seems like, so. Yeah. Well, think about it. We can decide at our next meeting um, if there is somebody that needs to be brought forward for that, so. If, well, on that note, if we have one brought forward, do we want to do, what was it, $1,000 in the past? Is that correct? To the mechanic of the year? That is correct. Okay. Let's, uh, if nothing else, let's make a vote on that. I'm going to, motion that uh, if we have an applicant this year, we, uh, 
give out a thousand dollars to the uh, applicant that gets selected by the same group that uh, the president, vice president, and uh, I guess I'll get Jeff Bow involved. They got his contact info to make a decision if we have more than one applicant um, before uh, the, what is it, the noon meeting tomorrow when that would be presented. I'm going to present that if we have one. At the same time that we present our uh, scholarship uh, winners. Um, With that, Clark, too, I think it'd be nice to to uh, do it again next year, assuming we're live next year to, to recognize those scholarship winners, so everybody knows that we still did give out our scholarships, and if we do have a mechanic of the year, we can recognize them as well, just so. It shows that we're still we were still operating even even during this time, you know, giving scholarships. And so next year, if we do it in person, you want to do what? Just recognize what this year's scholarship winners, and if we have them. Oh yeah, them. yeah, because it may be easily swept on the rug or forgotten or not realized that it happened. Correct. Yep. And there's just not going to be the attendance this year that we would at a live. That is that is correct. And it helps keep the keep the uh, donations coming in to know that we did continue on and, and okay. kept funding scholarship. Yep. No, I agree. Um, cool that we're aware in the, in the minutes that next year we're going to present as well for the kids that got it this year. And... All right. I will amend my motion to uh, make sure that, uh, well, this year we'll give a thousand dollars to the applicant winner if we have an applicant and uh, that will also be presented during the uh, meeting tomorrow at noon um, to the uh, NDAC full committee. That will also be uh, presented well, along with the uh, scholarship nominees. And uh, next year we will uh, mention the winners that we had this previous year at that same time. Is there a second? I second it. We'll have a vote by thumbs up under reactions. Looks like that passes again. Okay. Second item would be then or does anybody else have any new business at this point? I'd like to make a motion that the uh, scholarship awards be um, voted on as uh, 1750 for the Gordon Person scholarship and uh, $1,500 for the other two. One of them would be for um, uh, Bismarck Aero Scholarship. And the third one will be the Aviation Industry Scholarship uh, because it kind of concludes uh, all of the monies that were smaller amounts that were put in there. Nick Gaynard seconds. We did, um, we'll after the vote uh, later on, I did get a thousand dollars from, um, from, uh, propeller works. So that didn't get in. That's include, that'd be included in the industry one then. So. Is that that thousand dollars that uh, Francis would have received possibly mid last week, or is that something yeah. that you still yeah. currently have? Yeah, okay. I didn't get it till like Tuesday or something like that, so I sent it out right away. And well, before it. we get too far down this rabbit hole, let's have a vote on the motion that was presented by uh, Rod and seconded by Nick Gaynor. Uh, actually, we should discuss it first. Oh, correct? sorry. Yeah, is there any further discussion before a vote? Rod, who was that last thousand dollars from you said? Um, what's his Rob name? Works. Uh, pro yeah, it's uh from uh, Winnipeg. Uh, can't remember the guy's name right now. 
It's a propeller company up there, not um, not Cropworks. No, it's uh, I don't have it written down here. So we'll just give that a, under the industry industry award then. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So we got from them. We got from uh, Air Dakota Flight, and we got from um, uh, Cindy, and from. Tim at Tall Towers, and from uh, Odegaard Wings. Okay. Smaller amounts. So. Gotcha. Makes sense now. Yeah. So that would give us. So yeah, we'd be $2,050 out of our account to fully fund that with the donations as given, if that makes sense to you, Rod. Yeah. Um, you would have 2,050 plus, we'd have $2,700 actually in. Correct. $2,700 into our account once yep. that last thousand dollars gets put in there. And if we're going with uh, $1,750 and two fifteen hundreds, that'd be $4,750. And that would give us the $2,050 right. out of yep. beyond the uh, donations that you had brought in. That's correct. Hey, Chad, are, is there any expenses for, for PAMA from this uh, visual conference? Is there any expenses will occur from this, you know? No, the council or, or the association's handling right. that. That's okay. been allocated already from them. So there'll be nothing out of our pocket to cover any expenses? Uh, Not mm -hmm. as far as I know. That is my understanding also from oh. what I had been told. Everything seems normal right now. Everything, I think everything is good. No, and that's okay. Hey, Gary, we can hear you yeah, just fine. Just a minute. Hello. Hey, Gary. We can okay, hear you. I got you. Somebody said, hey, Gary, on there, so I must be on. Yep. You, you got to okay. mute yourself, Gary. Thank you. Bye. Yo, you can, okay, yeah, I've been on since the beginning. There we go. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion on the motion uh, was presented by, uh, <laughs> um, me. Yeah, by you, by Rod, <laughs> and then seconded by Nick Gaynor. Yep. I'll take that as a no. Let's uh, move to a vote, and we can vote by thumbs up again in the reactions section on the bottom of your screen. If you click on that, you can click the thumbs up. I believe that was a pass, uh, if you guys agree. Looks like some of them disappeared, but. All right, motion pass. Any other new business that we need to take care of? The one thing I'd like to bring up, Clark, is the Fly North Dakota uh, yes. Career Expo. Yep. They've got scholarship opportunities. Um, the lowest dollar amount would be $1,050. Um, that would get us a $1,000 named scholarship. 
Um, they've also got 2600 which would be a $2,500 scholarship. But then that would also be allocated, you know, just for mechanics. It's mainly going to be North Dakota students. Um, I don't think we need probably the bigger one, but I think a $1,050 scholarship for that, for that group would be appropriate. Any other discussion on that? Sorry, and truthfully, I need you just to repeat that if you could, and I was not listening one bit. I got something else going on here. Go ahead, sorry, Chad. I'd just make the motion that we, we approve a $1,050 scholarship uh, to, to the Aviation Association for their Career Expo in May. I'll second that. So Chad, that'd be Pam had donated a thousand fifty to the career days for a scholarship. Is that what? Yep, it'd it'd be a name scholarship for a thousand dollars, and then we can kind of set the parameters as far as who would receive that scholarship. Okay. So it could be mechanic related then, or technician related type of. Yep. Okay. Yep. And we would have control over the uh, deciding of who got that scholarship. They have a committee that would decide who got it, but we could set parameters on what those students would have to meet in order to receive that money. Okay. Well, who would the students be? Yeah. Who is so this the, open to? Um, any high school students, essentially. Within the state of North Dakota or... North they can come from elsewhere, but they kind of figure it'll be, for the most part, mainly North Dakota students. As far as I know, it's going to be pretty much all North Dakota students. I think they're the only ones really getting the invite to it. That could be this part isn't of just picture. like a Fargo, North Dakota kind of thing? It's going to be held in Fargo this year. Um, and then each year it's going to travel around. It'll go to Bismarck and I believe Minot as well. Kind of the way ours does. It'll It'll rotate, I guess, the expo itself. And if we want, we could have, um, probably get Darren Hall to sit in on it. He knows a lot more about it since he's kind of setting it up. I'm sure he'd jump in tomorrow to answer all the questions need to be if, if, if we want. Well, I uh, would make a motion that we uh, table that for the next meeting then if we can try to get Darren Hall to come on and maybe talk about that a little bit more. Sure. Uh, is there a second? Yeah, I'll second that. And uh, any further discussion? If no, let's, uh, do we need to vote on tabling something for the next meeting? Okay. I wouldn't think so. Sounds good. Um, okay. I'll get a hold of Darren right now and, and try to get him on at, at 10 30 yeah. tomorrow. Let's make sure I got my gun raft. We got mechanic of the year, um, scholarship amounts. Oh, one thing we do need to bring up. Uh, technically, I guess this kind of got missed in old business, um, but uh, I guess, however. Andrew Tybert had mentioned that $1,000 to give to North Dakota, Northland Community and Technical College. That $1,000, as far as I know, never got transferred to them. It's not a big deal because they aren't, having to put any expenditure towards coming to the conference this year. Um, I would mention that we should probably, I don't know, this is just a discussion on that. Um, we probably want to think about that and maybe possibly uh, bring that up and make a final decision on that at our next meeting also on if that's something we want to continue on with for next year if that's even that they're wanting if they're planning on coming next year or even if 
however that's going to go, I guess. In the minutes, did we state that it was four this year, or did we state? Uh, for the... Yeah, for their student life fund for the NTC PAMA Club 2020-2021 supplement. It was brought forward from the uh, earlier meeting that in last year's uh, session. And uh, you seconded it and we uh, all voted in favor and motion passed. And then the money never got divvied out. Well, the way it reads, I'm guessing that just kind of put us on the hook for this year. I mean, they, yeah, I me, mean, if they yeah. want it again, they'll have to step forward. They'll, they'll need to step forward and ask. Okay. No, that's fine. So if we do this for uh, Northland, is there any reason? Why we wouldn't do it for Lake Area Tech? Yeah. I see no reason why we'd favor one over the other one, other than that Northland had asked and Lake Area hadn't, but neither one have asked for this year. Right. So. Yeah, okay. Because uh, Lake Area Tech sends, you know, they've, they've had presence at our, our past events, so it would only be fair to consider it anyway. I would agree. The only thing I would bring up on that, I mean, I have some uh, partial attachment to uh, Lake Area Tech more than most other people at UND, but um, they use the Minneapolis conference more so for their training that they had to than they do the North Dakota one. I've seen uh, much less of a presence at the North Dakota one than we ever have. And I've seen more of them at the Minneapolis and that may be due to timing or because it's a larger event, they have more access and stuff to different types of training while they're there. I understand, but uh, and I've seen both of them in the Minneapolis one. Yeah, no, that's so right. you know to single that out wouldn't be fair because they they also uh, Northland goes there and so does uh, Lake Area. Correct. Yeah, no, that's uh, that is correct. Well, I think it should be up to them to ask for it. Yep. All right. Well, I guess that's the end of that discussion. Um, unless there's anything else you guys would like to speak of on that behalf. If, no, but I see Mike McGew just wrote in the chat that he can answer questions about the expo. Yeah, sorry, sorry guys. I was uh, bouncing around channels and and heard your conversation a little bit, and and Darren and I are kind of the co-organizers of that career expo and we um we actually are both presenting concurrently while your meeting's going on tomorrow so um not saying we couldn't get to you but it, it, it'll be the timing will be a little tough uh on that meeting tomorrow so i'd be happy to kind of answer any questions or or discuss with you a little bit more about that career expo if you want Sure, you got seven minutes, six minutes before the first presentation, and we still got a vote on officers. So, okay. Well, I didn't, uh, I didn't hear everything that was discussed because I was bouncing around there, but it sounded like Chad uh, summarized it pretty well. Um, essentially, well, and, and to think long term, I'll give you the big picture on the scholarship side, and um, you know, you guys can decide what you want to do. But there's two different types of scholarship opportunities. One is an endowed scholarship. Um, and in that scholarship, that's a perpetual one. That's you put money in and then every year from there on, you could take money out and that takes about 30,000, but then you get a thousand dollar every year for forever. Um, for that one, once the fund has started, you have three years to raise that money. So you don't have to have 30,000 up front, but you could do kind of a fundraising campaign and, uh, and develop an endowed one. Uh, the other side is the one-time scholarships. And uh, like Chad mentioned, uh, I, I, 1050 or 1100, I, I forget the exact number, but it's a little over a thousand, uh, which gives you a thousand dollar scholarship and it gives you naming rights. And again, you could set the parameters. So you could say, we want this to go to a, you know, if you wanted, you could say, we want this to go to a North Dakota student who's a senior in high school, who's going to pursue aviation maintenance, Um I don't know how strict we can get with that, but I, but I know you could set those sorts of parameters on it. Um, but it is a separate committee then that would finally 
determine that award winner. So it takes a little work off of you guys. You don't have to vet all those applications. You don't have to worry about um, how that money is spent afterwards. They disperse the money. They do all the awarding, all that kind of stuff. And then it would get awarded at the Career Expo. Um, and then a little side note to that, this year, the, the May Expo is actually kind of the one that's left over from last fall. It got postponed because of COVID. Um, and we're still planning on having another one in the fall. So there's kind of two that we're planning on happening this year uh, and then one annually after that. Okay. Any further questions for uh, Mike? Okay, we will uh, continue to talk about that at our next meeting. We need to kind of move on from there. Do we have any uh, discussion on election of officers of anybody that you think that you might want to move on in? Um, I'm technically the VP this year. I guess I'll continue on as the president next year. Um, uh, we're going to need somebody to move on up. I believe we can continue on in the same trajectory that we have been where everybody moves up a spot. We're just going to need a new treasurer. Does any keep in mind an idea for that for the next meeting, unless if you have any discussion or anything you want to add in during this meeting at this point. It actually be for a secretary, correct? Because the treasurer. Is Sorry. Yes. For the secretary, the treasurer. Um, yeah, that is taken care of. He said he'll stay on with that uh, until he can no longer do it. So Francis Wagner is our perpetual treasurer, similar to what you guys are kind of used to at this point. I misspoke. I will continue to work on the raffle stuff even after uh, next year's um, session, I guess. I will continue on with that. Rod, are you still good with continuing on with your uh, committee um, with the scholarships with that? Sure, as long as everyone's satisfied with it. I mean, I, I am. Uh, and same thing for me. If you guys want somebody else in on the gun raffle, I'm not going to hold back and say I have to do it. I will more than happily give it away. But um, it's, it's easy to sell the $5 tickets, it's harder to get people to apply for scholarship believe it or not <laughs> all right um and then i believe that's about all we need to get done for this um i'm in a motion to adjourn the meeting it is currently uh 9 958 uh, is there a second second all in favor Give me a thumbs or a yay, or I'm going to basically say we're done.